Hi there. Strong presentation skills will shape your career and your organization. Today I'm gonna to share six ways to connect with an audience. My name is Michael Duarte and I'm a master facilitator and Duarte Method expert, where I get to help powerful brands and people just like you improve their presentation skills. You know, I recently read an article that posed the question, is EQ more important than IQ for success? And the article include, included a quote from Richard Branson and in his response to the question, he says, I think being emotionally intelligent is more important in every aspect of life, and this includes business. Being a good listener, finding empathy, understanding emotions, communicating effectively, treating people well, and bringing out the best is critical for success. And this isn't just something that Richard Branson said, but study after study supports this assertion. In a Harvard study, researchers compared the performance of professional teams and found that those with higher EQ outperform those with higher cumulative IQ. And this barely even scratches the surface on the topic. EQ is linked to savvier decision-making, leadership potential, and even higher income. So why am I starting a video on connecting with an audience with a discussion on EQ? It's because with an, you're connecting to an audience starts long before you're ever in the room with them. You've got to take a journey through some exercises and empathy to begin with. So you start by understanding your audience. You can't truly connect to someone if you don't understand them. In our workshops, we talk, to pe we talk people through a series of questions to help them gain a better understanding of their audience. We call this an audience empathy map. And at a high level, you start by asking, what are they like? Research your audience's demographics and preferences. Are they all from the same company? Well, go and do some research on that company. Do they serve in the same roles? Do a little digging into that role. It's amazing what you can find out just by doing a bit of research. You might want to ask how much they already know about your topic. If they're highly knowledgeable, then you can go deeper into that topic, get into the weeds if you want. But if they're brand new to that topic, keep your message at a higher level. By understanding your audience, you can better connect to them and you can tailor your presentation content to better meet their interests and their needs. We always start with audience understanding. The next tip is to use relevant language and examples. Back in the 70s, there was a video recorded that was really kind of a bit of a joke. It's an overview of a fictional product called the Turbo Encabulator. The writer and narrator was a guy named Bud Haggard, and he was a, a top voiceover talent for technical films. And he wrote the film because he rarely understood the details of the voiceover he would be recording. And he thought others might get a kick out of that experience. It's a funny video intended for a laugh. Check it out if you like. But it perfectly expresses the what the heck experience we have during technical presentations that include obscure terms, acronyms, jargon, and sometimes what seems like completely made up words like turbo and cabulator. It's amazing to consider the amount of technical detail that goes into people's presentation decks. We've become so familiar with the jargon, the acronyms, the industry specific terminology that we forget that others may be just hearing that term for the very first time in your presentation. Rather than overwhelm with complexity, use relevant language to help connect to your audience. This may include interpreting your terminology into language that's familiar to them. It might seem cliche, but it's actually a really good idea to go through the exercise of imagining that you're explaining your complex idea to an elementary school student. That child, probably pretty clever, but they don't have the necessary experience or extensive vocabulary to make the relevant connections. It's up to you to do so for them. The next tip, address their needs and concerns. If you've done your audience analysis, you probably already have a pretty good idea of what they need and what they're concerned with. One way to start your talk is to acknowledge what they already know. When I get an opportunity to work with a group that's pretty well versed in story, I know I don't have to make the argument for story. They already believe it, they already know it's powerful. Uh, instead, I can start out by saying something to the effect of, I know you already understand the power of story how it engages us, aligns us, and bonds us together. Today, I want to go a bit deeper and speak to the structure of story and how you can use story strategically, even in business communication. That intro allows me to lay down a roadmap of what I'll cover while also sharing that I understand that they're already well-versed in story. This essentially is setting the context of the current state and allows me to paint a picture of the future state, where we're headed. For you, it may be to share something like, we all know that we missed our Q3 targets. And then you transition to where you're headed. That's why we're changing our sales approach for Q4. Make sure you address their needs and their concerns. 
The fourth tip is to read the room. As audience members, we might try to hide our emotion, but we're really not that good at doing so. Reading the room and adjusting your delivery illustrates remarkable EQ as you empathetically meet the needs of your audience. You know, it's been a few years, but I still remember back to sitting in lecture halls and listening to professors drone on and on and on, never once looking up to see if the class was paying attention or if we were even awake. And while this isn't precisely identical to a business presentation, I've sat through a lot of meetings during which the presenters simply talked to their slides and not to the audience. And as a result, they couldn't read the room. By addressing your audience, making actual eye contact with them, you can quickly assess if they're bored, if they agree with you or not, and so much more. In your presentation, you can start to acknowledge what you're observing. If they look confused, you can say, it looks like maybe I haven't explained that concept very well. What questions do you have about what I just shared? In that scenario in particular, I believe it's actually important for us as communicators to assume that their lack of understanding is our fault, not theirs. Again, this is about empathy. If your audience looks like they're losing energy, then you have to amplify your own dynamism to help infuse energy into the room. If they look tired, it might be a good time for a break or even to make the decision to end your talk early and give them back a few minutes of their day. You can only know to do this by reading the room. Tip five is to use eye contact. You know, there's been a lot of research around this topic for optimal length of eye contact and how long you should hold that with an audience member. And that length is three seconds. All right, so for some of you that might've just gotten extremely hard for you or even awkward uh, and how that might feel to hold that length of eye contact with somebody in the room. It might even seem impossible to do that in virtual meetings or the main stage for a larger presentation. But making eye contact builds a connection between you and your audience, and it's possible to do so in any setting. First things first though, you have to make actual eye-to-eye -eye contact. Don't look a couple feet over their heads or off to the sides and just hope that they sort of incidentally get eye contact. You gotta look them directly in the eye. For virtual meetings, that means looking directly into the camera. That camera represents your audience. For larger audiences, you really can't make direct eye contact if you've got hundreds of people in that group. Instead though, you can mentally break up your audience into grids or zones. And then you can make eye contact with a person in each of those zones for a few seconds before moving to the next. This eye contact by osmosis perspective can be very powerful in terms of connecting with the members of your larger audience. Another consideration, don't quickly scan your audience to make eye contact. This sort of back and forth approach can make it seem as if you're a bit unsure about yourself, maybe lacking credibility, uh, and it can erode even your own confidence. And the last tip to connect to your audience, express how you feel. I remember coaching a speaker a few years back, Steve was his name, and he was a pretty good speaker, the kind of guy who was always happy, always smiling, really energetic, made him a lot of fun to hang out with. During one of our coaching sessions together, uh, he was his typical self, his smiley self, energetic, happy. The problem was his topic was pretty serious and had some potentially dire consequences if things didn't change. In that instance, Steve was visually expressing his enthusiasm and happiness, but he needed to express his concern. So what we do with our facial expression is a guide for your audience on how they should feel about you and your topic. If you're sharing bad news, being overly energetic and smiley will undermine your leadership. Instead, tame down that enthusiasm and redirect your energy to show that you take this topic seriously. If you're excited about a great new opportunity for your org, don't present it like a zombie saying, I'm excited to share this idea with you today. That blank expression and lack of emotion doesn't help your cause. Instead, show that your excitement through your energy, vocal dynamics, facial expressions. I am so excited to share this opportunity with you today. Whether this comes easy to you or is a struggle, being deliberate about how you express your feelings visually will help your audience connect to you. Connecting to an audience isn't always easy. If it were, you wouldn't be watching this video. But by following these six tips, understand your audience, use relevant language and examples, address their needs and their concerns, read the room, use eye contact, and express how you feel, you can better connect to your audience and your audience will actually connect to you. And your emotional intelligence, your EQ, will increase giving you a boost in your own performance. Thanks for watching and good luck on your next presentation.